you bozos are not playing stage one right. I'm sorry. For the most part, like 99% of players, I'd argue you are not playing stage one correctly. So let's talk about it because stage one is actually really, really important. It's very crucial in the way that it not only determines how stage two plays out, but it also determines the board direction, how stage three will play out, and how even the way that you play stage one can actually dictate and change the way that you might end up playing your end game board. So let's talk about it in today's video where instead of going over some gameplay commentary, we are going to be looking over just a little bit of a more of an analysis video, if you will, talking about stage one units what we're looking for and then we'll go over five of my own games where i will walk you guys through stage one and how that affects the later parts of the game let's get on to today's video starting off let's first go over what what is important when it comes to stage one what exactly are we looking for for stage one stage one is sort of the beginning it is the sort of the prelude if you will the appetizer before the main meal stage two where we want to try and set ourselves up, right? An appetizer sets up your meal, right? Same way with like a prelude or a prologue before the story starts, I think. I don't read a lot of books. Not not fiction. I actually read a lot of nonfiction. Nonfiction is like kind of goaded, uh, low key. It, it, it sounds like it's shit, but then you get older and you actually read some like nonfiction that's like good nonfiction. And then it's like kind of good. And anyway, sorry, I'm, um, I'm getting sidetracked. Uh, anyways, let's talk about it. So first off, when it comes to stage one, what is the most important thing we're looking for? Well, that is what is known as unit quality now this change is based on the meta but unit quality basically just refers to how good is it is a unit standalone so for example a unit that has a very high unit quality is a unit that is something like rise where you can tech and rise into your board like nine times out of ten like this unit you always are almost happy to have a rise on your board except maybe it's zon realm but like this is a very high quality unit you can almost always tech it in it's very very great but this doesn't apply to just legendaries and five cards that you just get to splash onto your board, right? We have other units as well during stage one that have very high unit quality. Units like Cho'Gath, units like Renekton, when you have the two Bruiser pair for your front line, or even Maokai and Poppy for your two Bastion front line. These are really great unit quality units that we are looking for in the early game. Obviously, the most, I guess, obvious example, if you will, it's the Irelia Jin stuff with the Ionia. Because through the Ionia, once you have these units in, you have a very, very strong early game. So making sure that our early game we're leaning into these units is really, really important. Even if you have pairs, because yes, upgraded units are important. Even if you have pairs though, we need to be careful because low unit quality, or rather low quality units, are not units that we really want to be taking onto our board too often, even if they're two-starred. For example, the biggest obvious example is Kale, because even a Kale 2, this, this unit sucks during stage 1, stage 2. It barely gets the job done, barely does any damage. It's not a great unit to be holding. Most of the time, you will, you will see a lot of people skipping out on Kale 2s. Not really needed. Oriana 2, sometimes is nice but if you're playing Piltover then you want to lose so usually it's a uh, tier 1 unit anyways and then even if it's tier 2 it's like only if you have like a Malzahar 2 Oriana 2 then maybe you can consider it but most of the time you're not really holding Orianas you'd rather hold the other units if you're split between two decisions right Tristana as well low unit quality because Gunners is just very bad at the moment and even a 2 star Tristana doesn't pump out as much damage as you'd like most of the time also is very reliant into the Jinx as well now you may notice that um obviously Kled is here as well because Kled frontline is pretty bad but we should talk a little bit about Viego and Galio because you might be going like, oh, Viego and Galio, though. These are kind of strong units, though. Like, um, standalone, they're actually kind of nice. And I kind of agree with you. But this is where the third part of sort of the, you know, what we're looking for, the priority kind of comes into play, where Galio and Viego are bad in terms of board direction. So even though the unit quality is fine, and if you get an upgraded Galio too, like you're nine times out of ten playing it, the problem is, is that if you have a Galio on your board or a Viego 2 on your board, let's say you hit the Viego 2, and let's say your early game, uh, let's use Viego as an example, because I feel like Viego is a little more common than Galio 2 in the early game, right? So usually if you have Viego 2, Maokai 2, you're looking at a pretty strong board, but there's, the, there's a problem, right? Where you end up playing like a Bastion Frontline here with the Kaz and a Maokai, and you play something like a Zed, right? This is a strong stage two board, don't get me wrong, but in terms of your board direction, it's gonna be hard for you to play this comp in the early game. Maybe you have something like Shift Slam on the Viego, and then eventually pivoting out of the Rogues into something that is something more similar of like a strategist line where you're playing something around like the Azir Lux. But in order to pivot out on this, it costs a lot more money and you're not really setting yourself up for success versus if you are to play something, let's say uh, AP-wise, you play something like the Malzahar and you're playing something that is like, I don't know, maybe like the Oriana. Or actually, this is not even the case. It could actually probably be something along the lines of like, uh, let's say, uh, like, like you could do like a Bastion Frontline and you could have like a Jin and like an Ash instead, but like the Jin is holding a Ginsu's or even like a Shiv. You could still play Azir out of this line and this is just 
you're much better off playing something like this rather than um playing the azir stuff because again this actually not only opens up uh Azir and Strategist, but this also opens up eventually into the Aphelios line, which you may think is bad, but if you are able to go level 8, it's actually pretty good. So, yeah, this is sort of what we're what we're dealing with, right? And again, this is, again, it, it changes. Every patch, it will always change what is considered, like, good unit quality, bad unit quality, how to play around these units, etc, etc. Um, just to go a little bit in depth, a little more, just some example boards you can play at 2-1. Um, again, this is stuff that most of the majority of players do know, but how to actually reach these boards, that's the problem. So, but before we talk about the process, we got to talk about the angle, right? And then we can talk about the process and how to get here. So again, um, Shurima start really, really strong, especially if you have that Renekton 2 early. You basically just throw tank items in the early game onto a Renekton 2. He gets the Shurima buff, never dies, and then Cassiopeia Tilia can hold onto your AP items. Usually it's the Cassiopeia holding stuff like Shiv, holding stuff like Ginsu, setting yourself up for Azir. Very good stuff. Malzahar, uh, Kassadin, and Cho'Gath. This is, again, the voice start. This is only okay, in my opinion, or strong if you have the Malzahar 2. Otherwise, this is actually one of my favorite boards to lose streak with, which I know sounds really stupid because void is supposed to be this very early game trait. But if you have the Malzahar 1 as your carry, um, and then you have Cho'Gath, Kassadin, Rek'Sai, whatever, you basically just don't have enough damage on your board. So you just have a bunch of tanky stuff that, like, slowly whittles down the opponent and you just get a couple kills. But you're basically ensured a pretty free 5 loss, which we'll eventually see later on in the video. Um, moving on, Irelia with the set and stuff. This is sort of uh, arguably one of the strongest, if not the strongest, early game board. Uh, you have the Jin, Jin 2 carry, oopsies, Jin 2 carry with uh, Warwick set. Uh, it just plays out so beautifully in terms of the traits. And then you just take an Ash at 5. It, it's a very easy board to play. This is sort of everybody's default for the early game, which is really good. Um, Samira 2 is also here as well. Samira 2 is just because it's, it's, it's a strong standalone unit. You can play this into sort of like a Noxus opener. Something with like, I know I said Kled was a bad unit in general, but you can also do something like instead of Kled, you could do Swain. Swain with the Cassiopeia here. And like, just for some, you know, click, just from visual clarity, it's very cluttered in here. But this is also just like very very strong early game and you actually get the tempo because you're playing into noxus and eventually you play into the darius katarina at level six to start your whole board you're having a good ass noxus game but yeah that's basically it for like in terms of early game let's talk a bit more about the process because this is the part where a lot of people are struggling again it's not the end goal everybody knows these are the strongest board it's, this isn't new stuff the problem is the process so here we have five of my own games where i'm going to take you guys throughout stage one and these are actually normal games but i mean the point still stands you'll see what i'm talking about um i took i did normal games because i'm not trying to ff at in a ranked game at 3-1 because i had to try to get the footage uh i was getting all this footage out by today so uh anyways uh i really wanted to make sure that we were um you know getting some games in here that we could get a lot of repetition and try to see if we can get some good stuff uh anyways also important to take note of the realm because the realm can actually affect the way that you start off the game i'm not really for the sake of the video i wasn't really positioning my units in a way that was specific towards the realm but i guess we can talk about it a little bit in here but let's talk about stage one right okay so stage one we're given a samira off bat this is thrush's sanctum and just I'm just gonna wait for this to kill everything good idea to scout by the way in the early game not a lot of people scout at one two i actually think it's really important because let's just rewind it a little bit when you scout one two um the merit behind this is that you actually get to see all the units that everybody's given so you see that one person has an aurelia one person has Jin, another person has samira um so they're already probably thinking about trying to play a little bit more into the ionia challenges line and we're going to be playing more into here also people who high rolled any three costs we can see what else they got um some guy got a darius they might be playing into noxus so we already have an idea as to like the general direction of the, the majority of the lobby so here Let's just go back a bit. I hate that this UI, by the way, this this um this play bar just like doesn't like to go away. Um, here in the shop, once the UI bar goes away, you'll be able to see we have two poppies, two Orianas, and a Renekton. What units do we pick up from this shop? This is important. Again, this is this is important to think about. Um, right now we want to play two one costs on our board for a fact. If we play um the Rexai onto our board, if we're given an economic start, we won't be able to make 10 on the spot. So we want to play two one cost units at all times here. So usually the best approach, in my opinion, is to play the double poppy here. Not double Oriana. Again, we were talking about unit quality earlier. Double poppy is a much higher unit quality than Oriana. Plus the odds of us playing this Oriana are very, very low. So we're probably gonna look at playing double poppy onto our board here, and then we'll see what else what else we get in terms of money. This Renekton is not worth picking up over this Samira, because as of right now, we have a we have a front line and a back line, okay? The whole point of stage one is to set you set yourself up for stage two. Right now, 
our front line is Double Poppy and Samira. If we were to immediately go into 2-1, that would be our board right now, because that would be our strongest board. You could make the argument, again, that it could be Rek'Sai and Renekton, but again, we're trying to make sure that we have double one costs on our board right now, so that's not the plan. And again, this Rek'Sai is not worth selling for this one Renekton, because the other two units we get out of it are just a pair of Orianas that we're probably not going to be playing here. But again, you can make maybe make the argument that you want to pick it up, but we'll see what happens. So... 1-3 hits. 1-3 hits, slowly killing off the unions. Let's see what we get. We get 3 gold. Alright, so buy out the shop. It may seem redundant, right? That we bought out the shop anyways and we're talking about all of this. But at the same time, it's important to think about it because you don't even know what's actually going to come out of the loot orbs. Maybe it's just a bunch of components. Maybe it's just a bunch of gold. You don't know. So it's important to think about this process because you don't know until after they drop the loot um, what was like technically the optimal play but we wouldn't have known right anyways going into one four now we have the double samira in our shop we have a samira two that is given to us which is really really nice so here again we want it just in case just in case it is somehow a gold opener from this spot we want to play the double samira here for certain and we don't want to upgrade it we don't want to upgrade it because if we do upgrade it immediately on the spot that is our board costs five gold now instead of three which if, we, if it's a 20 gold start we want only three gold on our board otherwise we won't be able to make the 20 so I believe that's I believe that's how the math works. Um, but in general, it's also a good practice just to not immediately upgrade your units because you don't know what's going to come out of the orbs. There are going to be scenarios where you might have not wanted to upgrade the Samira. You might have had a better line, but you're lacking the gold now because you have five gold on your board, right? So here, we're going to play the double Samira on our board. That is for certain. We do have the Renekton pair as well, which is really, really great. Now the question is, what do we do with these double Orianas and a Zed in our board? Or Zed in our shop, rather, right? Do we pick up the Renekton pair? Do we pick up the Zeds or do we pick up the Orianas? Now... In this scenario, we're going to, again, we're going to play uh, three gold on our board. And actually, we can pick up this Renekton in our shop for sure because we know for a fact we want to hold on to that Renekton pair. But let's think about this, okay? From this spot, what is our 2 on board? What is our 2 on board? This is really important. Our 2 on board right now is we're probably going to be playing a Bastion frontline. Or no, sorry, a Bruiser frontline with this Rek'Sai and the Renekton paired up together and a Samira 2. That is probably our level 3 board. That is what we know for certain. And we want to make sure that whenever we're going into 2-1, we already have a front line and a back line decided. Because if we don't do that, there are going to be times where you're going to find yourself with like just Renekton, Cho'Gath, and like fucking Kassadin. And that's like your 2-1 board. You're going to lose a lot of HP. You're not preserving anything here by playing something like that. So we want to make sure that we have a front line and a back line decided. And here, as you can see, we're going to wait for the timer to go out. Once it does, then we pick up this mirror. And again... We know for a fact our 2-1 board is going to be bruisers. It's not Bastion, it's going to be bruisers. We know that because that is what we are, we are given right now, okay? So, the correct play here is to actually sell... Well, well, once we see the components here, right? But once we see if it's all components, we're going to actually sell the poppies here and the Oriana so that we are able to pick up... K uh, not the Kale, sorry. The, the Zed as well as the Renekton. The reason we do this is because we know that Kale is worse than Orianna in terms of a standalone unit. The unit quality of a Kale 1 is very low. It's abysmal. And we're able to hold on to the Renekton pair and the Zed because we know we're not going to be playing around Bastions for our early game. Going into the 2 1 augments here, we take up buried treasures. See the way that we're, our board is set up here. We get the, let's see what we got. We got a rod, so probably looking like a protective valve slam to me. And then we play the Renekton here, and we actually hit the Aurelia in our shop here. So we're actually able to level from the spot and play two challengers, two bruisers, and this is our 2 1 board. You could now, depending on the way you want to approach the game, maybe you want to do a Hodge slam, maybe you want to do. Um, something else. I personally like the Vow Slam here because uh, it kills a tier. On top of that, you have the Quick Love open for maybe something else like uh, Guard Breaker. Maybe it's for uh, IE Hodge. Maybe IE Ginsu's is on the table as well. This could go AP or AD. Um, it could go either way. So but anyways, this is how we are now at level 4, 2-1 with a strong board, and that is sort of setting ourselves up for a good stage 2. You're going to see me here again. Uh, probably going to slam the Vow here, and then probably going to slam uh, Quick Love on the Samira. Yep, there you go, and that's our 2-1 board. Good stuff. Okay, going into game two here. Again, 2-1, starting off with an Aurelia. Again, always really good stuff to be scouting. Um, Again, it's this is Thresh's Sanctum. So I again, I am playing the game as if the realm does not matter. But the realm actually does matter, especially in these scenarios where at 2-1, you or rather during stage one, you really want to make sure that um, you are killing units at the beginning because that gives you extra souls at the beginning. So the way that I position here, it's double frontline Aurelia here. Again, like we talked about before, the 2-1 costs, but... Um, ideally, I put one Irelia actually in the back and hopefully maybe the other one dies and then that way I get an extra soul here. Really small min-max, but it is important. 
As you can see here, we are given the Cassiopeia and we're given the Garen as well as the Darius. Now, some people would actually hold on to the Garen in this scenario because they think that they want to keep the Juggernauts together. But that is actually a bit of a problem here. The reason why, I'm going to pause the video real quick because this is important. The reason why it, you don't want to hold the Garen here ever is because Juggernauts, one, are not an early game comp. They're more of a mid-game comp because there are no early one-cost Juggernauts. They're all two and above. But on top of that, Juggernauts sort of act as more of a frontline rather than as damage carry in the early game, especially during Stage 2, unless you happen to get really good Darius items here as well, which, for example, we do have a Cloak, so maybe if we got dropped in BT, we could consider holding onto the Juggernauts in this scenario, but it's very much more likely that unless it's a sword that's coming out of this next orb, if we get one, very likely we're just selling the Scaring here and picking up the entire shop instead. So as we can see here, we are dropped a rod. So we're not going to be thinking about Darius in this game. And we're just going to play here with the Aurelia 2. Now here, we're given a really interesting shop though. Here we're given Zed, Set, and Swain. What do you do in this scenario? Because there's some people who would actually pr and probably would pick up the Swain here and try to play into three Noxes instead and try to play into a Darius reroll, cat reroll comp because Ionic Spark is one of Katarina's BIS. Also, Cloak can also become a BT as well for uh, the, what's the name? For Darius. So it's really, really good. Like you can play Noxus in this spot. But the problem is this, is that we also already have a guaranteed Aurelia too. So Zed and Set give us Ionia here and it actually gives a really, really strong start. And actually, if you think about it, our 2-1 board has already been decided. Ba just based off these units. Can you figure out what our 2-1 board is? What, what is our strongest 2 1 board from the spot? Take a moment, think about it. Okay? Have you got it? Our strongest board at 2 1 is going to be Aurelia 2, Zed 2, or sorry, Zed. I mean, Zed 2 would be nice, but we're not going to hit that. Aurelia 2, Zed, Set, and Darius. Because we get Juggernaut, right? And again, it's not the Viego because Viego in general is just not a very, very good unit. It's not very good unit quality, and we're sort of throwing ourselves into the rogue direction rogue in general not very good unless you're hitting that katarina 3 darius 3 uh or zed reroll right it's one of the two so we're probably not going to be leaning in that direction uh especially because we don't have zed items so zed reroll is actually not really an option and katarina is something that's not a unit that we have at the moment right so here we're probably going to pick up the set we're probably going to also pick up the zed at this point because we already know what our 2-1 board is going to look like we're going to sell off the one cost here hold on to the cassiopeia because why not and this is going to be our 2-1 board. From the last item that gets dropped here, it is probably, again, it's probably not gold. It is, in fact, a tier, and we're given sort of an AP line, right? Take buried treasures here at 2-1, because why not? You could have maybe taken Shreema's Legacy. Um, it has a very good average, but we don't have a very strong Shreema line. We also don't have any Shreema units, so not the best. Also, anyways, here, buried treasures, we have a bow, tier, rod, and cloak. So from the spot, we are going to level because our board is decently strong for our 2-1 board. Also, we don't have any one-cost pairs that we're trying to hit. So we're just going to slam the Ionic Spark here for tempo, tech on the Darius for our board, and this is our 2-1 board. Very good stuff. We're starting off the game very, very strong. Next game, game three. So this is actually within the Placidium Library realm. So we're not going to really think too much about min-maxing our stuff here. And again, uh, should be scouting here at 1-2. I don't know if I am. I think I'm watching like One Piece on like my right monitor. So I actually don't think I was watching the screen at the time. Should pick up the orbs here sooner though. This is definitely uh, not optimal gameplay, if you will. Uh, anyways, get a cloak dropped right off bat. And we're given sort of a weird opener, if you will. Um, a lot of poor unit quality in our shop. Uh, like the Orion and the Kale, not very great. We don't want to pick those up. We only got two gold to really work with, technically three. Uh, because, again, we do have the Orion pair on our board. But we do have an Aurelia and a Jin both within our shop. So from this spot, it's probably more correct to pick up the Aurelian Jin, focus on our unit quality here, and then probably give up on this Viego to pick up the Cassiopeia, or even give up the Oriana pair and pick up the Cassiopeia pair instead, which is what I believe I would do in this spot. But also, again, Aurelian Jin, we should pick that up, and that should be on our board at the moment. So here, as we can see, uh, I'm not AFK, and then we play the two, our, two Ionians, right? Do not three yet, but again, we want to focus on unit quality whenever we can here. Um, obviously, I do see the Cassiopeia in our shop. I do end up selling the Viego here because I think in general, um, a standalone Oriana is probably just stronger here. So that's that's what that is. Anyways, we pick up, we find here, we find ourselves with a Cassiopeia 2, but also a Jin pair as well as the Renekton and the Poppy as well as the Cassidy. So we already have sort of a decent like Bastion frontline and some weird flex backline going on here, right? So there's, there's a lot of issues here. What, what would you take in the spot? What would you take in this spot? Actually, I, I think that's a better question here. Because from this shop, what would you pick up? And what would you play on your board? Because again, what you throw onto your board is also important in this scenario because we don't want to be putting upgraded units onto our board, right? So from the scenario, it's very likely we want this Cassiopeia too, no matter what. So we're going to probably throw the Cassiopeia pair onto our board 
plus who? Plus who? Who, who, who's the last unit that we're going to throw onto our board here? The last unit is going to be Poppy. We're going to play a Poppy Cassiopeia pair here onto our board. And the reason why is because we're sitting on a Cassi we're sitting on a Poppy pair as well as the Cassie unit that's in our shop that we'll probably pick up as well as this Jin pair. And hopefully we'll be able to also pick up the Renekton and something else because we should be getting three more gold in this spot. So from the spot, as you can see, uh, if I'm not AFK, yep, there we go. Cassiopeia pair on the board. And maybe I leave the Aurelia here. No, it should be Poppy. Good. Very good stuff. I'm glad I am a man of my word. And here, we're going to go into neutral to see what we get dropped here. Um, so we get more gold here. Three gold, perfect. So we pick up the Renekton, the Jin, the Cass pair, and we pick up the Poppy. Or the Cass and the Poppy pair, rather. Very good stuff. And we're given our final component, which is a Crick Love. Very good. So we're given a Guard Breaker start, um, which is fine as well. Uh, roll over the two emblems. I really like Slayer Crest in general. I, I'm a huge Zed reroll fanatic, but that is not on the table. We're trying to work on our fundamentals here. So, working on our fundamentals here, we're given a tier, uh, Crick Love, Belt, and Cloak. Not a very strong opener to begin with here, but we are sitting on a lot of pairs. So we're sitting on the Jin pair. We're sitting on the Poppy pair. We're sitting on the Cho Gath pair. Even though we're not playing Bruisers, for our 2-1 board here, it's very likely that we'll still be able to maybe play into Bruisers instead of our Bastions here. We should choose one or the other, uh, just, you know, for economic reasons. But also because um, whatever we hit first for our upgrade units, that's who we're going to probably play for our frontline. Obviously, we do not level to 4 here because if we were to do that, we would lose a lot of chances on hitting these 1-cost pairs because our odds for 1-cost hitting our shop is 75%. I do slam the Hodge here. Um... You could argue Guardbreaker is okay, but I mean, Hodge is fine. This is just a personal preference. Here, next shop hits. We're given the Cho'Gath 2 and the Jin 2, which is really, really nice. Again, we are rewarded for not leveling here, which is really, really great. And so we did lose the first round, unfortunately, but we do make the Jin 2, the Cho'Gath 2. We're, we're going to just completely give up on Bas Bastions now because that is just not going to be part of our plan here. And there's probably a good chance that we probably get to make 10 here. Otherwise, we can also level here to try to tech in onto a unit so that we can play the... Uh, Bruiser frontline as well with the Renekton. So here as you can see we sell the Bastions and then we play into I think I'm like th thinking about Void as well um, But I think I want to play this Cassiopeia 2 on my board no matter what It's just an upgraded unit. It's very very strong and it's probably stronger than just having like this cast one This Miles of Heart 1 on my board and then giving up on upgraded units just doesn't ever seem correct Especially during stage 2. So even our even though our board is looking kind of wonky right now. That's okay We're still playing a board that is like, you know, it's decently all right, right? It's still like Pretty strong three upgraded units, you can't really complain. And here we get our dub here, which is really, really nice. We can probably, I don't know if we can fully streak with this board, but it's definitely a board that is strong and competitive for stage two. Going into two, three here, we are given the set Kled, Tarek, Cho'Gath, and Soraka from our shop. And at this point, at this point, we definitely want to make 10. You definitely want to make 10 gold no matter what at 2-3. And by, you know, look at our components again, we're given, again, more AP. But that could also be a Gintu as well. So our strongest board here, we do want to make 10 here. But we're also probably going to play this set in instead of this Renekton. And we have our level 5 board already decided. Again, it's all, up, all about thinking ahead. Where our level 5 is going to be the Cho'Gath 2, Renekton 1, uh, Jin carry with the Ionia start. And we have the Renekton for potentially playing into a really strong line for stage to five and above so very very good anyways going into the next game here placidium library very good stuff um again this is game four and again aurelia start really really nice that we're getting these Aurelia starts it's super nice um again aurelia you might notice we're, there's a heavy emphasis on holding on to the strong unit quality here and as you can see here we actually get an economic start we're given six gold on top of three units so we know for a fact we're going to be making a lot of money here we want to make 10 no matter what especially with an economic lead you want to push your advantage whenever possible so here we have four gold that's already we have four gold on our bench here, and we prioritize the Renekton 2 pair over any of these other units here because the pair is probably more important here. Still, Renekton being a very strong unit, but if we have to sell, we will sell here to make 10. So here, we we fortunately get more gold here. Immediately make 9, make 10, selling the, the Malzahar here, and then we actually get the Jin pair, Aurelia pair, out of the orb, which is really, really nice. Now, here's a crossroad. Here's a, here's a challenge for you. What do you buy, and what do you play on your board at the spot? From this point, it's probably very likely that this is going to be a 20 gold start. I don't actually have this stuff memorized, but from this spot, I'm thinking, okay, it's probably a 20 gold start, so I want to keep my board cheap so I can make sure I make 20. I want to push my economic advantage here. So what do you do here, right? A lot of people would actually probably end up making... A lot of people actually would probably play the Cho'Gath and the Renekton pair in this spot on their board. Not great. Because if you do that, what ends up happening is that what if you have to sell the rest of your bench? Bench, your bench, okay? If you sell the rest of your bench, you have no units for damage, 
and then you'll just be bleeding a lot taking max damage every single round it's not going to be a good time here so instead what you should do in this spot is actually give up on the renekton pair and play the aurelias and the Jins instead and hope that maybe you can find something else because at least in this scenario even if they sell your bench you'll still be able to make 20 and you'll have some level of frontline some level of backline that you can still work around right so that's what we're going to be doing here we're going to end up playing the aurelia pair and the Jin, and then we're going to see what happens with our economy again we ideally don't want to sell the pairs here whenever we can't but if we can make 20 here in this spot we should almost always make 20 because our economic advantage will be incredibly enormous here as you can see we get the karma out of the orb here and as we'll soon see we will be selling everything to make Great. So we can hold the Aurelia pair with the Jin pair, and now we're giving it into 2 1. Obviously, it's buried treasures every single time. Um, I mean, maybe there's something good here. There's not, so it's just buried treasures. And we're rewarded in Aurelia 2 off the first shop, which is really, really nice. Obviously, our board is very, very weak, but we want to iterate our board in the best way possible that will at least give us some level of strength that we can still play around. So, in this scenario, even though we do have the Jin pair and the Aurelia, that doesn't actually complete the Ionia tree. So, in this scenario, it's actually better for us to instead try to play around the strategists that are within our shop here and play around the Teemo Swain for our two on board. So, we have an Aurelia 2, a Swain, and a Teemo for strategist and that is just the best board that we can make here while maintaining above 20. Lose the first round, go into the next one, and we're awarded a Jin 2, which is really, really nice. And so you might notice that like I'm high rolling a lot of these like uh, Ionian units, which is really nice. But again, we're trying to flex our board, trying to make these economic thresholds whenever we can. But with, you know, Jin 2, Aurelia 2, you already know where this game's going. So we're just gonna end it right here. Finally, into the last game, this is now a bit more of a, um, what happens if you don't hit your units, right? What happens if you don't hit that Jin 2, that Aurelia 2, what do we do in this scenario, right? Well, let's talk about it. This one here, um, get into the orb immediately, six gold plus a tier. So we're just gonna buy out the whole shop. Not much to talk about here. Buy out the whole shop. We do have a gin pair, which is really, really cool. And again, you might notice every single time we're playing these Ionia pairs, Ionia units, whatever we can, because we care about the unit quality and we care about having great board direction. So here, see what we got out of the orbs here. There's not much to talk about here. Everybody would play this the exact same way. Really, really good. If we get shift starts, so we should already be thinking about AP lines and AP sort of variations that might be available to us. But maybe it still is uh, a way to play Ionia from the spot. So here we're probably gonna tech onto the the Aurelia onto our board here, and then what else do we buy though? Right? What else do we buy from the shop? Chances are we're gonna we're gonna probably buy everything except for the Swain. You can make the argument maybe you want the Tristana over this other Viego, but if it's a pair, you might as well pick it up. Uh, very unlikely it ends up going onto our board here though, but at the very least, I mean, like, it's a pair of Viegos, maybe it's good, but this is sort of a weak shop to say the least. So we're gonna pick up the Swain here, but I'm gonna pick up the Cho'Gath, gonna pick up the Viego pair, and then just hope for the best. Again, I don't pick up everything immediately just because I want to see if there's actually money in here, but unfortunately there's not. So it's just how it is. It's just our 2-1 board. So not really great, not really great, right? Going in here, pick up the Ezreal Augment, and then again, this is Thresh's Sanctum. I should have killed another unit off the Souls, but we're not going to talk about that right now. And so we do have an Ionia start for the beginning because we do have the Zed. Excuse me. Excuse me. A lot of Dunky Cough this morning. But we do have the Zed, and we could play into the Ionia line here, but it's a little iffy. It's a little iffy because of our components. We got to think about our board strength, or rather our board direction, when it comes to our items here. We're given a very heavy AP start. Very, even if we wanted to try to kill the Ginsu's and the tier, like the rods and whatever, uh, try to still force an AD line, it's really, really hard. We should just commit the AP from the spot. So it's probably going to be a shift slam for sure on top of trying to you know, find ways to kill this rods. Maybe even slam a Rabadons, but this could be Gunblade plus one, maybe JG. So definitely not the best way to go about it. Definitely shift slam here, and then we'll try to find ways to kill the rods. So because we know we're playing around AP though, we probably want to give up on the Ionia units. So this means that from the spot, we actually probably want to pick up the Malzahar here and try to maybe play around some sort of Sorcerer front line with the Swains, with the Malzahar, maybe some Void in there, maybe even Viego to item hold here as well. That's also possible from this spot. So as you can see here, thinking about it, trying to think of a good board that we can play around, end up with the Bruisers, end up with the Sork, end up with the Malzahar in the back line most likely, give up the Bastions immediately because we want to create board space here because we are holding onto a lot of pairs and we want to try to see if we can find a way to make a decent board. Swain, Malzahar, this is the strongest board we can make, and Cho'Gath just for Cho'Gath. Obviously, we lose the first one, we take full damage, just our, our board is very piss weak, we're looking for that loose streak here. Again, we don't hit our pairs here, this is very, very difficult, but at the very least, we want to make 10 at this point. And at this point, it's very unlikely that we are playing into Ionia. We know that for a fact now, because if we try to play into Ionia, we're going to have a terrible time with the Shiv and Rod and another Rod to kill. So we're probably going to sell all the Ionia units here, maybe even the Samira, and then plus one, either we win or we will just sell, uh, or we get the one gold from the treasure chest, which is really great. We get the Gunblade here. So 
we're just gonna sell all of the Ionian units and probably the Samiris here, make 10. And actually we can make, make 11 because uh, the Vigos are very unlikely to go onto our board here. So here, as we can see, we are probably gonna end up taking a lot of damage. We end up taking max damage once again, going 2-2 two, two, and then into 2-3. Again, trying to preserve this lost streak. This is the final game, so we're gonna talk a little bit more about this because when you lose, there's a little more that goes into just stage one. Uh, stage two is really, really important here. And we're able to play two bruisers in the front line, and this is just kind of our board. You could also make the argument that we could play Void here instead, but we are sitting on the Cho'Gath pair and the Renekton pair, so it is a little difficult to say. But we do end up deciding to go with Void because I think Void is still strong enough that we can still kill like maybe one extra unit and the Renekton pair isn't really doing us much favors because we're not really seeing a lot of direction with the bruisers in general especially with Sork and AP so off the carousel we're gonna go and we're gonna definitely pick up a bow from the carousel if we can because that is gonna be our Azir items we're gonna definitely lean Azir if we can in this spot and then here as you can see we do slam the Ginsu's here now we do something very interesting here it was not depicted, but we did scout our lobby, and we noticed that if we played against one other particular person within our pool, there's a very good chance that we would actually win. So we actually want to make our board weaker. So here, what we ends up doing, we just double, we just quickly do a zon check. It is a virulent veil, or virulent whatever, virulent bioware, if you will. And then we just play the double swing here, try to make 30, and then we're just gonna chill. We're just gonna chill. And the reason why is because again, this guy, if we fought him with our void board, we would have won. He's playing a very, very piss weak board. And as you can see, we barely, barely lost. But had we had not weakened our board here, we would not have preserved the streak. Now we're here at 40 gold. Again, we wanna be scouting the lobby, make sure that our board is weak enough to lose. And it definitely is here. But if we were to make this Mazel Hard 2 here, we would definitely not be have the, enough money here to, uh, you know, make 40 gold here. So what we're going to do here instead is actually we're going to sell the cast in here and then we're going to play the double Malzahar. I'm not going to upgrade it just in case somebody weakened their board last second. Um, maybe I should have scouted here, which would have been better, but I didn't. I chose not to, but that's okay. We still pick up the Malzahar anyways, and then we're sitting on a Malzahar 2 board with double swing for our front line. Again, very weak board, but we wanted to preserve that 5 loss so that we have a lot of economy. So even though we're 5 loss, we're down 30 HP, that's okay. We're still able to play into some decent board at 3-1 because we're lucky enough to find a Ruxai throughout the orb here but also we're able to play a board that is some semi-decent with a lot of direction a lot of money again we're sitting at level 5 65 gold 65 gold at 3-1 here we are sitting on a lot of money and we're playing the Ezreal augment as well so we know we're getting the 12 gold that comes out of the 2-1 orb and luckily enough we actually even win that fight on 3-1 here we take the giant grab bag here we get a lot of money here we're sitting at 75 gold level 5 and actually from the spot because we have so much money and because we have so much economy saved up from that loss streak that we were able to preserve we can actually just push level here we just push level here set at 7 natural some shops maybe just roll on 30 and then we'll just see if we can, you know, hit any of these years or whatever. And we'll just sit on this board. We're in a very, very good spot. Start slamming items. The GS is eventually going to go onto our Azir. We're going to probably slam here on a Ionic Spark as well as the Titans. And this is our 3-2 board. And now our spot is looking really, really promising. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope this helped. Um, I know this was a little more monotony, redundant, informationally dense video, but I feel like it was something that's important. And like, if you can get through this video, you're definitely going to be finding a lot more success preserving HP in the early game that will hopefully, uh, you know, make the difference between some placements. So hopefully this video helped. Take care, guys, and happy climbing.